must be very cautious in the spirit. When you get the spirit of discernment, you will always know when it is heteros. You will always know when it's a different character, a different spirit. It may speak like, but it is not the same. And he will send you the comforter. The first person to ever call the Holy Spirit comforter was Jesus. Never before in the entire Bible had that spirit ever been called comforter. John 14, 16. And I will, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you. I want you to give me the KJV uh, of verse 16. I want you to give me the KJV version of verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Father, let this word change us. Heal us, raise us to another level. Let it change our thinking. Let it continue in our hearts and in our spirits that we may be strengthened this morning in your might and in your power. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are here with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say aloud, amen. amen. Uh, you don't have to high five again, just sit. Now, James 5.17 says, Elijah was a man of many passions just like us. And so, so the thing that brings people out from being ordinary is that they enter a season of prayer and become prayer itself. And the Bible says Elijah, he was subject to like passions just like we are. He was subjected to them just the same way we are, the same issues, but he prayed, he prayed. The insight in Greek of that prayer, and you'll be hearing a bit of Greek today. <laughs> the insight of what means when James 5.17 says he prayed, it, the translation, if you were to look at it the right way, means that uh, he prayed with prayer. Or in prayer he prayed. He was inside prayer. Are you here? So I want to speak to you on a subject today because we've been dealing with prayer. It's one of those things that I don't care how connected we are. I don't care how networked we are. I want to teach this church to pray. Amen. I want to teach you to pray from the front. Amen. Amen. I want to teach us that prayer is not something we put on and off during meal times. It's not something we put on and off during just times of trouble. But I also want you to know that you are not alone. That Jesus was very clear in John 14, 16, when he says, I pray the Father he shall give you another, 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 another. So I want to title my subject this morning, Comforter. 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 The first time Jesus speaks of the Comforter is in John 14, 16. It's the first time. And I want to tell you something I've discovered as I learning more and more how to teach the Word of God is that if you ever want to know what the meaning of a word is or what was meant in the Bible about that thing, you need to go back to where it was first mentioned. Usually that place will contain the ingredients of that meaning. It, 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 may, it may change a little later or have other meanings, but if you want to understand its full context, or it's full authority. Go back where it was first mentioned. So if you want to understand Comforter, you can't understand the Holy Spirit without coming to John 14, 16. I'm using Comforter because I want you to understand how your prayers would be powerful. So he says, I'll pray to the Father to give you another. Another, for those of you who did English, is an adjective. So I did some study. There are two types of another in the Bible. The first type is the one you find here in John 14, 16. He says, 
I will pray to the Father and he will give you another. That another in John 14, 16 is the Greek word, write this down, alos. A-double-L-O-S, alos. This is class. You came to class. If you don't have a notebook or your neighbor doesn't have a notebook, tell them you must be a visitor. I know what they told you. He said, it's okay, I'll get the DVD. <laughs> so, alos, this is what alos means. It means another of the same kind, another of the same quality, another of the same character. So basically, it's like a duplicate. That's the first meaning of the another in the Bible. There are two types of another. The other type of another you will find in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. It says, I marvel, if you could put it up, that you are soon removed from him that called you to the grace of Christ and to another gospel. KJV, keep me on KJV today. And to another gospel. So... This another in Greek is another that is heteros, H-E-T-E-R-O-S, another. What does heteros mean? It means another kind. It means another quality. It means another character, unlike the one. So when Jesus is speaking the word another in John 14, 16, he's not speaking of heteros. He's speaking of alos. Similar. Glory be to God. Bonus fewer. So, 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 Jesus, as the first comforter, is telling them that another, <laughs> just like me, of the same quality, of the same character, is coming. So, in verse 26, if you can go there, John 14 26. He says, when the comforter is come, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me, to act on my behalf. So even if it's a different spirit, it carries everything similar. <laughs> he was the same kind of person Jesus was. As divine as wise, as strong, as loving, as tender, as patient, as humble, as mighty, as glorious, as marvelous. Oh, glory be to God. I will send, the Father will send another, another, alos. This is why you must be very cautious in the spirit when you get the spirit of discernment, you will always know when it is heteros. You will always know when it's a different character, a different spirit. It may speak like, but it is not the same. Prayer is a place where the flesh <laughs> is crucified. After you've prayed, what do you say? After you have prayed, what do you do? Many of us say we are very prayerful, we are praying for a nation, and then we spend all week speaking and insulting our president and our leaders on social media. What we have prayed in Akesha all night, we nullify it the whole week through our work, our actions. So prayer must have corresponding actions. It may seem like, <laughs> it may even appear like, this is why you must ask God to give you a spirit of discernment so that the moment anybody opens their minds, their mouths, their spirit jumps at you so that you can test the spirit. It may prophesy. But it may be another. In verse 18, 
He says, I won't leave you comfortless. I won't leave you like children without a father. I won't leave you like students without a teacher. I won't leave you like less knowledgeable people wondering where your instructor went and you're looking for guidance. So I'm going to pray to the Father and he will send someone who is just like me. The way I speak, the way I think, the way I operate, the way I see things, how I do things, he will come. <laughs> he will be exactly like me in every way. So, if he is here, it is as if I'm here. All right? Because we think, we behave, we operate the same way. I take this slowly so that you get it in your spirit. So, so, so you won't miss me as much because the Holy Spirit is coming and him and I, we, we behave the same. We talk the same way. We smile the same way. We sit the same way. We worship the same way. We pray the same way. Oh my God. So if we have the spirit, then we have Jesus. Glory be to God. We are not sitting here as people that have no hope. We have the comforter. So Jesus called him comforter. I will, I will speak to daddy. I'll speak to the father. And he will send you the comforter. The first person to ever call the Holy Spirit comforter was Jesus. Never before in the entire Bible had that spirit ever been called comforter. So Jesus named it. What does comforter mean? Let's go deeper into Greek. The word comforter in Greek is parakletos. Parakletos. P-A-R-A K-L-E-T-O-S. Para, Kletos. It's broken into two words. Para and Kleos. Para and Kaleo, sorry. So para, the meaning of para means alongside. It's the word used for closest relationship. Carries with it the idea of proximity. Alongside, right by me. Very close. The Holy Spirit should be looked at as being close to us. Outside you, but very close. <laughs> Jesus said he would abide with us. With us forever. So, when we talk about fellowship with the Holy Spirit, this should affect us in a powerful way. So, if I say para, this is the word I can use even with my wife. I can say I am para with my wife if I'm very close to her. She's not inside me, but she's me. Okay. She lives with me. She talks with me. She shops with me. She travels with me. She's para to me. Are we together? Alongside. So when people are close, they affect each other. In fact, the more you look at the older couples, when I look at my mom and dad, my physical mom and dad, They've grown to a point where they talk the same. You can tell. You don't have... When we were children, when they were still getting to know each other, you could trick them. You could trick them and think that you'll send this one to go and tell this one this thing and this one this thing. But as they grew older, they started becoming one. The answer of one would be the answer of the other. So when you're para, you'll start to behave with what's alongside you. Like that one. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So Jesus said, I'll send one who will be close to you, alongside you. So, so when, when you're close to each other, this is what starts to happen. Uh, uh, you don't even have to ask. Uh, as I'm learning my wife, I don't have to ask her what she's thinking. I can tell. This is not the time to suggest what I was going to suggest. This is not the time. It's not the time. So, so you, when you're para to somebody, you know. You know when you've grieved them. Makashatabas. You know when you've hurt them, when you're, when you're close to somebody, when they're alongside you. So, so, so if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you're close. In relationships, you don't have to beg or plead for them to come. This was one of the things that I want to teach us today. When we say, come Holy Spirit, 
He's there. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll come there. Khalil, Khalil, Khalil. This is the same word used to describe the call of God. It's a calling, Khalil. So it's a calling. So, so the same way Baba Israel, the same way Elizabeth, the same way Nancy, the same way Thaddeus has a calling from God, the Holy Spirit has a calling. So, I have a calling to be an apostle. The Holy Spirit has a calling to be alongside every believer, every time, when you go to bed, in the morning, through the day, the calling of the Holy Spirit is to be alongside. <laughs> the same way you have a calling to travel the world, he has a calling to be by your side. That's the calling of the comforter, alongside, constantly, consistently, throughout, be by my side. That's the meaning of Kaleo. So God called the Holy Spirit to be alongside. Are you understanding what I'm saying today? So, 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 I, 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 <laughs> it is his calling to be alongside you at all times, no matter the circumstances. So it is an error for us to say, come Holy Spirit, come. Why? Because he's calling. <laughs> if you are a child of God, and if you are a believer, he's by your side. Right now, I want you to say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for being by my side. Because even as I speak to you right now, he's there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's his calling. Sometimes I used to think when I've done wrong that he wanders. You know how some of us behave is that the Holy Spirit has, 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 I've, I've nimet kanamt. So the Holy Spirit steps back. Kutukana is the good sin. You know there are deeper ones. And, and you think that because you're in trouble, that the Holy Spirit is not the gate. Let me tell you something. He has a calling. And his calling is to be with you when you're up. To be with you when you're down. That's why he's called comforter. Are you here, church? I've had to search scripture to ask God, help me understand the basics of what the Holy Ghost was sent for. He's, he told me, I've sent him to be by your side. He has a calling. His mandate is called alongside. So when Jesus said the comforter, the Holy Spirit will be by your side and alongside you, that's a calling. The Holy Spirit is the person that has been called by God and the calling God gave him is that constantly everywhere, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are, no matter what you are saying, no matter what you are wearing, no matter how you're feeling, he should be by your side. By my side, by my side. Jesus had a calling. How many of you know the calling of Jesus? To come and die. <laughs> it was the call. That was his calling. And guess what? Assignments from heaven don't fail. They come and do what they're supposed to do. His calling was to come and die. And guess what? The Holy Spirit has a calling to come and stand by your side. He can't go anywhere. He can't change his mind. <laughs> no. He has a calling. Thank you, Jesus, for outmaneuvering our wayward manners and giving us a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So he can't go anywhere. Say thank you, Jesus. He can't change his mind. Say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Let me tell you, I discovered one of the reasons you can't get destroyed, even if you deserve destruction, it's because when he's alongside you, there are times you were supposed to be bullied by that accident and your skull was supposed to be crushed and the Holy Spirit being alongside you stopped it. Oh my. Have you ever, I've been in situations, there's a time I was driving from Mombasa and I can tell you, we, we overtook a truck and there was another one coming and you try and calculate and you're with your family. And this is the one, your wife, she's opening her mouth to scream, but nothing is coming out. 
the children have closed their eyes. Let me tell you, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he shrank the, our car to go under. I don't know if he moved the truck to go under something. Somehow, we came out. Let me tell you, you must learn to understand. It's not because you're a good driver. Have you been in a situation you know this was death? But because he's alongside. Hey! This is a moment to say, thank you, Lord. I deserve death. But because of Paracletos, because of the comforter being alongside me, I want you to put your hands together and thank God for the comforter. He is, he is, he is a changer of destinies. effects of some bad things because he's alongside you. You see, Jesus says in John 14, 17, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come back to you. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because they see him not. Neither do they know him, but you know him and he is with he is with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See that last part, he is with you. In Greek, that is final. He's with you. It's a finality. In other words, that's his assignment. <laughs> Jesus is saying he's with you. It's like a command. Wewe, kahapa. Mm. He's with you. In Greek, it's a finality. It's a final, he is with you. That means he cannot go. Because if he goes, he cannot come back. It's a command. Are you hearing me? So, even when you think you're going through hell, the Holy Spirit is the reason hell doesn't go through you. Even if you're going through the flood, the Holy Spirit is the reason you don't drown. Even if you're going through the fire, the Holy Spirit is the reason you don't burn. <laughs> so when friends talk about you, I want you to start having a conversation with this other friend. The one who only talks things that will help you in matters to do with God. You need to start spending some time with him. Comforter means one whose calling is to stand with another person. So can I suggest something to you today? If you know this from today, how will you treat him? How will you speak to the Holy Spirit from today? How will you converse with the Holy Ghost from today? If you know he is there all the time, you be careful about the places you go. <laughs> when you're fornicating, he's alongside you. Witness, oh my Kai, let me tell you. Kama kuna kitu na fa kufanya utoke kwa yoki tanda. You don't need that. Listen, he's also called counselor. I'll show you just now. Yes. But let me tell you, yes. when you're masturbating, yes. he's looking at you. Yes. Paracletos. Because he can't go. <laughs> Forget your pastor. Paracletos. <laughs> Billy is <laughs> standing right there when you come out of the bed grabbing your trousers he's, he's with you because he's <laughs> he's alongside you hey. <laughs> look at Psalm 139 verse 7 <laughs> 
Ah. Ui. Huu nakataa kuacha dhambi sababu unasema hujashikwa. Ako hapo. <laughs> In fact, ndiye amekuficha. Sababu ukishikwa utauliwa <laughs> if the husband catches you. <laughs> God has already caught you. If the husband catches you, God is saying, well, listen, let, let us reason together. She's not your wife. <laughs> he says, for Psalm 139, whither I go from thy spirit, whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, there you are. <laughs> He knows you're rising up. He knows you're sitting down. He knows your thoughts from afar off. There's no place you can hide from him. He fills heaven. He fills earth. He fills every place simultaneously and universally. You see, when Jesus was here, Jesus could only be at one place at one time as a man. But the Holy Spirit can be with all of us all the time, everywhere. Oh, ma kashata. So I want to give you... He just doesn't have a calling to be alongside us. He has an assignment. And I want to give you some of the things of what he has been called to do and give you scripture. Number one, he's our helper. He is our helper. And by the way, he has an agenda. You don't call the Holy Spirit it. No. It's a person. He's a person. And he has an agenda. He. Are we together? So he is called the Holy Spirit. He is called the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's chief purpose and responsibility is to help us. I don't think we understand what this means. John 14, 16, Jesus is very clear. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. What are the other things? Counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener we'll catch as, few of, as many of those as we can in a few minutes, that he may remain with you forever. It's not a rumor. <laughs> so, go to John 16, 7. Does it say in the Amplified? However, I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say, you read, good advantageous for you mm -hmm. mm. so what is a helper a support a backing a boost Romans 8.26, likewise, the Spirit also helps us. He's a helper in our infirmities, in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray, how we, we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Most of us have not been using the help of the Holy Spirit Can I, uh, Robin, Kizito, can you come and help me? You guys help me. Can you help me grab about four chairs, each of you two? Please. Yes, come. Can you put them over here? Yes. What they've done is they've helped me to carry four chairs. Ladies and gentlemen, it's as simple as that. I don't want to come with complicated things. The Holy Spirit is a helper. The way they helped me carry those chairs is the way he helps you. He's a helper. The reason you are tired, weary, is because you're carrying everything yourself. 
But Jesus says, I'm sending you a helper. 